let's do this one. X, Y is in R if X is congruent to Y mod 5. And you can put that in parentheses if you want to. Now, if you don't know what this is, that's fine. Congruent to y mod 5 means you have the same remainder. x and y have the same remainder if you divide by 5. So that's just a mathematical way of saying if you divide by 5, they both have the same remainder. So how many different kinds of numbers are there that way? Five. However many remainders there are, right? So, like, 2 is equivalent to 7 mod 5. So, this mod 5 doesn't go with y. It actually goes with the congruent sign. Okay, so don't get confused by that. I don't, I don't say 2 is congruent to, like, 7 over 5 or anything like that. It's 2 and 7 are congruent mod 5 because if you divide them both by 5, they have the same remainder. Okay, so let's check if this is reflexive. And we're going to do it with the de definitions. Because you might be able to do it without the definition, but you need practice plugging in with the definitions because you might have some relations where it's a little less obvious. So the definition said for all x in S, what? xx is in R. So xx is in R. Let's use this. That means that x is congruent to x mod 5. Is that true? Yes. yes. That's always true. So yes, it's reflexive. Is it irreflexive? I write the definition again. So xx is not in R, so that means that x is not congruent to x mod 5. That's false. So you don't normally have reflexive and irreflexive at the same time, although it doesn't hurt to check. The only time you can have it, though, is if there's no points in the set. If there's no points in your relation or no points in S, then any statement is true for all X and S if S is empty. Right? If S is empty, this statement is true. Okay, so let's check symmetric. So the definition was for all X and Y and S. If X, Y is in R, then that means that Y, X is in R. So we have to use our definition again. If X, Y is in R, that means X is congruent to Y mod 5. And yx is in R means y is congruent to x mod 5. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Be. yeah, because it shouldn't matter which order because I said we divide both sides by 5 and see if the remainder is the same. So it doesn't matter which one comes first. Because that equivalent sign is a lot like an equal sign after you divide by 5 and take the remainder. So this is symmetric, you can check that off. So anti-symmetric, we would plug in the same way, but we already know it's not anti-symmetric, right? But let's plug it in, just because sometimes you might have both. So for all x and y, if x is not equal to y and xy is in R, and that implies that yx is not in R. So I put x not equal to y again here, and then x is congruent to y mod 5. Does that imply that y is not congruent to x mod 5? That's what that last part says. So this is not anti-symmetric, right? So that last part said y is not congruent to x mod 5. So this is false. So what I'm doing is I'm plugging in, using the definition of R, I'm plugging into every aspect of 
the definitions for each of my properties and then checking the statement to see if it's true. And that's the way you tell. For any relation, if you're given this relationship, then you should be able to do it. So you'll be given a definition just like you were for this one. X, Y is in R if X is congruent to Y minus 5, or you'll say if something, or is logically equivalent to. Okay, so we just have to check what? This one. The what do you need? Page, the last page you just removed. I need to, yeah, I need to write something. Real quick. So the last thing we have to check is what? Transitive. Transitive, but we also can check asymmetric, but that's easy, right? Because all I have to do is check irreflexive and anti-symmetric. Because if it's asymmetric, it's both irreflexive and anti-symmetric. So it can't be because it's not even irreflexive or anti-symmetric. So it's not asymmetric. So let's write that down. So it's not asymmetric, since it's not anti-symmetric or irreflexive, it has to be both to be asymmetric. So the last thing to check is transitive. So we write our definition again. So for all x, y, z, and s, if x, y is in R and y, z is in R, that implies that x, z is in R. So using our definition for the relation, x is congruent to y mod 5 and y is congruent to x mod 5, sorry, z mod 5, does that logically imply that x is congruent to z mod 5? Yes. yes. It does. So it's transitive. So I mentioned before that this relation kind of breaks numbers into five groups, right? Because any number that has the same remainder gets, is equivalent to any other number. So this is called an equivalence relation. And anything that does the same type of thing is called an equivalence relation. And the three properties they have is that they're reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So whenever something breaks things down into partitions, it sort of partitions things into sets where everything in there is considered equivalent, then you have an equivalence relation. So if you hear the words the same in the definition, you've got an equivalence relation because you're reducing something down to something that's the same between two things. So one equivalence relation would be X has the same hair color as Y. That's reflexive because you have the same hair color as yourself, right? It's transitive because if I have the same hair color as someone and they have the same hair color as someone else, we all have the same hair color, right? And it's also symmetric because if I have the same color, hair color as you, you have the same hair color as me. So anything you hear the same, think equivalence relation. And then you don't even have to check all these properties. You just go you know, reflexive, symmetric, transitive, and then you just double check and think about it for a second and make sure it makes sense. Okay, so if you're looking at the same, it's an equivalence relation. It breaks things down into sets, so you don't have to check all these definitions. But it's good practice to do it because you're going to have to plug in definitions for relations and actually see which properties they have. Okay. If I have, say that my, my set S is the power set of 1, 2, 3, the set containing 1, 2, and 3, and R 
is the subset relation. That's the power set. S is equal to a power set of a set that has three elements. So that power set has how many elements? Eight. 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 So power set of one, two, three is the empty set, the set containing one, the set containing two, the set containing three, one and two, one and three, two and three, and one, two, three, right? Okay, so this relationship is on S cross S, so the elements of these are going to relate to each other if they're subsets of one another. So a, B is in R if A is a subset of B. So subset, when we did our set theory definitions, what was subset like? What did we use? Less than or equal to. It looks like less than or equal to, but we used implication, right? which is just like less than or equal to. So your gut instinct should be that this is a partially ordered set, just like less than or equal to or implication, right? Because subset is transitive, right? If I have one thing's a subset of another, which is a subset of another, then the first one's going to be a subset of the last one. It's reflexive because you're a subset of yourself, right? And the only other thing is it's anti-symmetric, if one's smaller than the other, I certainly can't reverse the order. Right, so this is a partially ordered set. You don't have to have this automatically appear in your head, okay? It's just that if you remember that it's like less than or equal to, you can save yourself some work. You know that this is reflexive, you know it's transitive, and you know it's anti-symmetric because it's like less than or equal to or implication. So we just talked about an equivalence relation, and now we're talking about a partially ordered set. What's the difference between the two? The symmetry. Right. An equivalence relation is symmetric. A partially ordered set is anti-symmetric. So they're very similar because they're both reflexive and transitive, but one of them is anti-symmetric and the other one is symmetric. So equivalence, remember the word same is going to appear in the definition and symmetric, same and symmetric go together. Okay, for partially ordered sets, we want to compare things and have things be less than each other, which is not same. It's anti-symmetric. So for this one, I could actually draw one of those Heise diagrams, right? I've got eight points. I'll draw a line from one to another if one is a subset of the other one. So what is the smallest set out of this power set? The empty set. So that one goes on the bottom, right? Because nothing can be inside the empty set. So we're going to draw the Hasse diagram for this. The empty set goes on the bottom. Now, what are the smallest things that the empty set relates to? One, two, three. The set containing one, the set containing two, and the set containing three. So the next Things on the next level should be what? How many elements should those sets have? Two. They should have two. So the two element sets go on this level. And the next level should have what? Three. Should have three elements in each set. And then we draw the lines for subsets. Now, do you remember the binary representation for elements of a power set? We made a binary string for whether something contained an element or not. If you look at this diagram, it looks kind of like a cube, doesn't it? So if you actually transform these into the binary numbers like we had before, 
If you follow the edges of this, that makes a gray code. Remember we talked about gray codes you change by exactly one bit? If you go up one level, we've added exactly one thing to the set that you're in. I think that's really cool. So it makes a gray code. It's actually a cube. Right, so I have differ by exactly one element between adjacent things on the cube, which is kind of neat. What? Two and one, three. Two at the bottom and one, three at the bottom. This and this, oh. they're not adjacent by lines on the cube. Okay. So if you follow a line on the cube, you differ by exactly one element. Yep. It's kind of neat. Okay, so we're going to talk about this some more, but this was the subset relation on the power set and it's a partially ordered set.